Hello fellow YouTubers, this is Nick from NLB Solutions and today I'm going to show you how to quickly configure DHCP failover on Windows Server 2012 R2. In this video I'm going to start by checking my current DHCP scope which is currently residing on DC01 and then I'm going to start configuring my DHCP failover between my DC01 and DC02 I'm going to uh, check all of the steps uh, during the configuration of the failover and I'm going to try to explain that uh, to you. I'm going to look on the load balance mode and the whole standby mode and I'm going to choose one between them just to show you uh, how you can configure that and how you can finish the process. After uh, I, I'm done with uh, the, um, the configuration of the DHCP failover, I will show you from where you can check the DHCP failover properties and see if the two servers are healthy and are communicating between each other normally. And I can uh, show you where you can, uh, after you com configure the DHCP failover settings, where you can pre-configure them. After that I'm going to switch to my uh, second domain controller which is a DHCP server and I'm going to check and see if my DHCP failover was successful and if my server received all the information about my uh, DHCP scope. And please note that there are um, prerequisites in order for you to configure this and this is to have the DHCP role installed and authorized on two member servers. In my case it's DC01 and DC02. So let's start with the demonstration. I'm going to start by logging into my DC01 and when I go to tools and then open the DHCP management console let me expand that so you can see if I expand the IPv4 and I'm going to use my um, NLB scope, which is my main scope, to replicate to my second domain controller. And um, in the past, before Windows 2012, we had several options like split scope uh, or uh, DHCP cluster failover. But now Microsoft provides us with really easy solution uh, to use and uh, split our scope between our servers and uh, so that uh, we can have high availability between um, our servers. So um, if you right click on the scope that you want to configure, you can see that uh, you have the option to configure failover. So I'm going to click on that. And in here, it will uh, provide us with some more information, some introduction about the DHCP failover. And uh, it can, um, in the below window, it will show you the available scopes that you can um, configure a failover on. Um, you can remove the select all option and uh, if you have multiples, uh, multiple ones, you can choose between them. I'm going to use the, the one that I've uh, just mentioned above. And... Um, the next window is the relationship partner server. So for the relationship partner server, if I click browse at server, it will uh, show me what are the authorized DHCP servers within my domain. So I have only two at the moment, uh, but uh, if you want, uh, you can add additional ones. And please note that the, the uh, DHCP failover cannot, uh, cannot be configured on more than two servers, so for one scope. So if you have one scope, the maximum servers that you can replicate this scope is two. So um, I'm going to choose from one of my authorized DHCP servers, which is my DC02, click OK. It will uh, verify that the server is uh, reachable up and running. And if you if you pre-configured before that uh, DHCP scope for um, the current one, yeah, it will save the changes and it will ask you to if you want to reuse the existing failover relationship or if any exist or if you want to create a new one. So I, I want to create a new one. And uh, on the next page you will see that um, you will have the relationship name. So just for um, it will basically uh, configure that with the names of the servers, but let me for easier um, access I will just specify DC01 to DC02. Okay, 
and uh, the next value that you can configure is the maximum client lead time and basically what uh, this defines is how much time extension a partner server can provide to a client based on the time known by the partner server so Microsoft um, on their website recommend that uh, within testing purposes you can use less than one hour you can use a minute for example but in production environments you need to stick with an hour or above above that so next is the mode that you can choose um, which is load balance or hot standby so the load balance uh, as you can see from the name it can split uh, the um, percentage of the scope so my first server will give 50 percent of my ips and my se partner server my second server will give the other 50 percent you can uh, specify a different uh, value if you want uh, a different percentages between them and uh, the other option is the hot standby option so what will this uh, what will this do is it will configure a server that is going to be active and this server is going to give IP addresses to all of my clients but for example if something happens to that server the other one will try to contact that server to see if it's up and running if, and if it's not able to detect it within a specified time it will uh, start giving IP addresses so uh, you have two options to configure the uh, uh, partner server to be active or to be standby by default it's standby so what the, does that mean is that my DC02 will be a standby server below I can configure how much of the IP addresses are reserved by the standby server so it depends on, on how uh, many are, are your clients the default is 5% but if you have a lot of clients uh, maybe you need to consider and reserve more of this uh, space uh, so I'm going to stick with the default 5% and um, this is the the next value is the st uh, state switch over interval so this is when for example why my this is zero one is something happens and it's not reachable my this is zero two it's going to check if my first server is reachable and if it loses connection to my first server it will wait 60 minutes to restore the connection before switching over and um, before it begins to give IP addresses so this this thing you need to consider because for example if my DC01 is not available and my clients are not able to receive IP addresses within the next 60 minutes they will still not receive any IP addresses until my uh, DC02 becomes uh, becomes active so for example if you have a lot of users that are connecting you need to consider uh, this uh, this this value and making it uh, smaller for example 10 minutes so after 10 minutes if this is 02 is not able to contact this is 01 it will start giving IP addresses and right on the bottom is the shared secret that is the secret uh, between uh, the two DHCP servers to secure the communication between them so this is really important and you need to specify it let me specify one and I'm going to click next and the next window will show me a summary of what I just did and I'm going to click finish it's going to configure all the settings it finished successfully I'm going to click close to that window and now if I right click once again on my scope and go to properties I will see a failover tab right on the top and I can see all the information that I specified uh, when I configured my failover and I can see what is the state of this server and what is the state of the partner server so for example it's some if something is not working it's always good to check this uh, tab to see if the communication between the two servers is up and uh, running and everything is okay another way for you to check it in is if you go to your um, server right on the top let me just see it's on the IPv4 I'm sorry and if you go to properties and again fell over you can see that I have uh, currently the uh, DC01, DC02 fell over if I edit here I will see uh, all the information once again and I can reconfigure the settings uh, if I want to do this so I'm going to leave it like that and I'm going to switch to my second server in there I'm going to open my server manager
DHCP console and let's see if my second server was able to replicate all the changes okay I can see that here I have the scope I have the address leases for all of my machines and um, in here again I can open the properties check the failover and I can see if the connection to my um, active server is normal so this is how you can configure a DHCP failover it's really easy really fast and um, if you want you can choose between uh, hot standby and between um, load balance mode so I hope that um, this video could help you to configure your uh, personal DHCP failover because it's really important to have disaster recovery in uh, case of something happens with your DHCP so thank you very much for viewing and see you soon